So now that we've got the majority of plant anatomy out of the way, we're going to look at one final uh, flowchart and one final topic in this lecture called plant growth. And that's what we'll entitle this last flowchart, plant growth. So plant growth is going to be characterized by the following. It's interesting to see the growth of plants because it's directly characterized by something known as intermediate growth. And intermediate growth can be understood as the following. It's simply growth without plant, uh, growth throughout, I mean, plant's life. So let's write that down as growth throughout. That's the key word here. The growth is always happening throughout the plant's life, for the most part, in most plants. Throughout the plant's life. That's what intermediate growth really encompasses. And that growth is furthermore usually it's usually continuous for that reason and it's also going to happen uh, in this continuous matter unless the plant is in a sort of dormant state unless the plant is dormant or unless the seed is dormant let's say so we have continuous growth throughout the plant's life that's called intermediate growth so that's our basic sort of working knowledge of plant growth now, the reason why this happens, and it happens so successfully, is because of the following structures of plant growth. The first structure to understand are things known as meristems. Meristems are anything within the plant that is composed of cells that follow a specific differentiated form. It's composed of cells that form new cells constantly. These new cells are constantly forming. How do you make new cells? It's always via mitosis. So whenever you see the term meristem come up, you know that there's going to be lots of mitosis, lots of new cells happening wherever the meristem is. So plant growth can be categorized by the following sort of steps. Initially what we have is something known as primary growth. Primary growth is going to be the activity that occurs within and of the apical, that's the location, what we're looking at, meristem. Meristem is a point of lots and lots of growth. So this is going to be the activity of apical meristems that leads to primary growth. Apical meristems, if you don't know what the apical is, this is just going to be the tips of the roots and shoots. Tips of roots slash shoots. So when you have growth here, you're going to have primary growth. What is the purpose of primary growth? Primary growth is very good at increasing, up arrow for increasing, in, and results in the increase in stem and root, stem slash root length. That's the job here. The job is to grow the roots and the shoots. And the shoots are stems, leaves, therefore, and also the roots. And those are both going to grow in length and that's going to give us the following sort of result. The roots were going to extend downwards, essentially. So the roots, their job is to extend through this apical meristemic mitotic set of divisions. And then the stem will not just extend, but actually will, its goal is to simply become taller. Remember, taller means more light, more photosynthesis, more energy. So roots extend, stems get taller through primary growth. Primary growth is important because it actually happens in all plants. It's a basic mechanism of all plant growth that all plants undergo and go through. But something that's sort of more, in, more let's say, advanced or more developed, increase in development, is through secondary growth. Secondary growth is actually no longer in the apical meristems. We're going to shift gears and look at a different meristem. This will be in the lateral meristems. So instead of having this tip of roots and shoots that we saw in the apical meristems, the lateral meristems will consist of the following two structures. Either it's going to occur in the vascular cambium structure, or the growth will be within the cork cambium structure, sometimes and as well. So and or. So what is this? What are these? The vascular cambium, if you're having lateral meristemic secondary growth, you're going to be having mitotic divisions happening here that adds 
layers of secondary xylem. That's what we're specifically doing here, of secondary xylem. That's what I would understand here. That's essentially going to be wood. In other words, secondary xylem is just wood and also phloem. Secondary xylem and phloem is going to be growing if you have lateral meristemic vascular cambium growth. If you have the cork cambium growth, here what you actually have is the growth in which you have the specific replacement of something. Cork cambium lateral meristemic growth replaces the epidermis. Remember, the woody plants that do this, the epidermis, what was the epidermis replaced with? With the periderm. That's the new structure. That's the more advanced, the more sort of the structurally st structurally thicker um, uh, overall uh, structure, for lack of a better word. And this replaces the epidermis, the periderm does. And that is very good because this is going to be a much thicker replacement. Thus a much stronger replacement, thus a more, a more uh, advanced form of growth. Overall, the purpose of both of these, the vascular cambium, lateral meristemic growth, the cork cambium, lateral meristemic growth, is the following. The reason why you do this is because it gives an overall increase, not in length, not in extension or tallness, but it actually increases the girth, the width, the overall circumference of the plant. So that's what we're doing here with this type of lateral meristemic growth. Secondary growth will usually be seen in the following types of plants. It's usually within gymnosperms, things like trees, right? They have those big, wide, very expansive girth trunks, and that's our gymnosperms. Think pine trees, right? And also other woody angiosperms, trees. That's what I like to think secondary growth as. Very big, wide structures that are tall also, so they do primary growth, and they also continue on with secondary growth. And overall, the result of secondary growth, this uh, wood, the secondary xylem and phloem, and this periderm, the majority of secondary growth simply results in wood. It produces pretty much wood and bark of a plant. So trees that have wood and bark, those are due to the fact that that tree underwent secondary growth in their lateral meristems to grow outwards, to grow in girth. Okay, And then finally, last thing, take a look at figure 35.11 to drive home this point of secondary growth. That gives an overview of this process. And that's it. That concludes plant anatomy. It's a very long lecture. I completely understand. Lots of information. I tried to break it up in as logical sequence as possible. Hopefully from this you can understand that plant anatomy is a very diverse, very expansive lecture altogether and it has lots of material. But of course, I hope that you can appreciate the expansiveness of plants, the success of plants because of their very nice structure and function that comes with their anatomy.